Thank you so much, Alex. Uh, I actually uh, didn't catch so much of, of John's presentation, so uh, I hope I will not uh, be a complete parrot here and just repeat everything that he said. Hopefully there is something new here uh, for you. Um, but yes, like Alex said, we will look at the index changes uh, that are in Neo4j 5 uh, so far. Uh, my, my name is Anton Persson. But of course, I haven't done this work uh, all by myself. I've, uh, it's been done together with the, the rest of the kernel team and the, the wider engineering organization. So I just want to, to, uh, to sprinkle some credit uh, there. Uh, um, and I also want to encourage you to ask any, any questions that you might have about uh, the indexes. Um, I will I will do my best in the end to to answer them, and I I hope that uh, we will have some time for that. So questions are and comments are super super welcome. All right, so let's dive in. In Neo4j five, we introduce um, a few new index types, range, point, and text, as I think John um, mentioned. So we'll talk a little bit about that. We will also talk about a new uh, implementation of the text index type um, and the benefits of that. And in the end, we'll talk about what's new with, with full text indexes. So starting from the top, uh, the new uh, index type. So this, um, this part of the, the update in Neo 5 is you can think of it as a spring cleaning or a realigning of the, the surface uh, that will better serve us in the, in the future. And what we've done is we've taken the B3 index type and we've split it into its functional components, namely range, point, and, and text. So let's dive into this a little bit, what that means. So the B3 index type is kind of, or was kind of, uh, it's removed now in 5, but in 4.4, it was a kind of all-in-one type. It has support for range scans, like greater than, less than, equality starts with. Um, but it also has some spatial functionality, and you can answer distance and within bounding box type queries and also some um, advanced text functionality, like contains and ends with. And this seems great, of course. However, the standard implementation of like the, the, our native implementation of the B plus tree, the tree structure, um, it doesn't support those kind of queries like out of the box. So we've been, we've added the spatial and the text capabilities kind of glued on the side of the B tree. And this has some, some problems. Uh, for example, the kind of fundamentally, those parts have different data layouts. So we need to work around those in the code. For example, we need to sort points in memory to deliver ordered results. Um, the, the, we have a Lucene component that lives kind of side by side with our native tree implementation to have support for contains and ends with. Also, there is no separation of concerns here. So, which means that if we want to improve the contains uh, performance, for example, by changing something, suddenly all indexes need to be rebuilt in order to support that. So even if you have an index or a B tree index that only uses range functions, maybe you only have points in there, you still need to rebuild that index because one part of it has changed its, its structure only to support contains better. And that just seems very unnecessary and, and uh, expensive. Um, and also the, the surface is kind of confusing. Uh, like we have support for range scans efficiently, except for points, which are, which are sorted in a different way. Um, we have kind of support for contains and ends with, but only if you use a special index provider. 
So the B3 type comes with all kinds of problems like that. And basically, it's, it's not a very good surface. Uh, and since we're transitioning into a new major version now, this is the perfect time to clean that surface up and to change it into something that serves us better in the future. OK, so if we were to redesign index types, uh, the index type surface, how would we design it then? That was the kind of how would we like it to look? That was the question that we asked us uh, when started working on this. And I think this sentence from like one of our internal um, uh, document, on a, one of our internal documents describes it quite well. So based on the kinds of predicates that an index can evaluate, indexes form capability classes. And we refer to the capability class of an index as the index type. So the index type in itself describes what predicates does the index um, support. So for example, we have the range, the point, and the text type here. And the point type has support for uh, equality on point values, uh, bounding box uh, queries, and distance queries. The text index has a bunch of other uh, predicates. For example, contains um, the contains the predicates. Or like you can think of it more simply as range does equality in range scans, point do spatial queries, and text does specially advanced text type of queries. And um, we'll dig into this a little bit more. But here you have a, a picture of how the how I think of it as the B tree being split out into its functional component. And in terms of choosing what index type to use, um, my recommendation would be that range is the one that you want, unless any of those three conditions apply. If you use distance or within bounding box, then you want to use a point index. Um, even if you have point values, but you only do equality search on it, range will do that perfectly fine. You don't need a point index to support equality just for distance and bounding box. Or if you have contains and ends with predicates, then you want to use text. Or if you have very large strings, so if your strings that you store are larger than 8K and you want to index them, they will not fit in the range index and you will need to use the text index instead. And of course, range is the, the, default, um, the default option. All right. So how, talk, let's talk a little bit about upgrade of indexes from 4.4 to 5.0. So we wanted to make sure that uh, you could migrate without having any downtime of your constraints and indexes. So it would be a sad case if you um, upgrade from 4.4 to Neo4j 5, but when you are like back up and running, your constraints are not uh, keeping the integrity of your data. So that would be a sad story. So um, as a preparation step, before you start the migration, you need to replace all of your B3 indexes with those, those new types. And note that it's possible to create those uh, new index types in 4.4, um, but they are only there to make the migration smoother. They will not be used, actually, by, by Cypher in 4.4, uh, text, the text type being the exception there, which is used. OK, so once you have replaced your B3 indexes and B3 uh, backed constraints, uh, you're, you will be ready for the, to do the actual migration. And during that migration, the B3 indexes will be removed automatically. So let's step through a simple example of what this might look like. So here we're sitting in Cypher shell, and we have uh, our show index command and we list all of the indexes that we have and we see that there are a bunch of b3 indexes here that needs to be replaced and uh, we have the properties uh, born last seen name 
and an ID, all of them on the person uh, label. So the, the index on born, uh, we want that one to be a range index because we want to do range seeks on, on this property and the property is a, is a number. So we create a, a range index uh, to replace that one. Next one, last scene. Uh, this is a point, uh, point property uh, that tracks where the person was last seen. I'm not sure what uh, application this is, some kind of surveillance maybe. Um, but since we want to do within VBOX queries, uh, we create a point index uh, as a replacement. And finally, the name. We want to uh, search, uh, search by contain, for names containing a certain substring. So we create a text index for that. So this should be pretty, uh, fairly straightforward, I think, um, as long as you just keep track of what, uh, um, uh, what type of predicates do you, do you use for your respective pre predicates. And I should maybe also say that if you have uh, a property where you both do lots of range scans and you do um, bounding box queries, for example, on the same property, then you can create both a range index and a point index. That's uh, completely possible. Okay, so now we, we have replaced the, the first three. We see here, for example, that we have a B-tree index and a range index on the same label and property combination here. But we still have the constraint left. We have a uniqueness constraint. And in 4.4, you identify that uh, from the show index command by in the uniqueness column here, unique. It says unique here, which means it's backing a uniqueness constraint. So in order to replace that constraint, we use the standard create uh, constraint statement. But in the end, we append options, index provider, and then the range dash one dot o provider. This will um, create a constraint backed by a range index instead of a B-tree index. Um, and I should maybe also say that uh, out of the three new types, only range uh, can support constraints because it's the only one that, contain, that will contain all different property values. Uh, text index only deal with strings and point index only deal with points. So they will not be enough to back a constraint. All right, so now we have replaced our constraint uh, we, with, with a range index here. And we are ready for the migration. And the B-trees will be automatically removed uh, in that process. And when you wake up in NeoPJ5, your indexes and your constraints are uh, up and running. So we hope that this will, will um, make the migration uh, Slightly like like um, to have help you have less downtime of your indexes and your constraints. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the text index type. Um, we we have introduced a new implementation in Neo4j five of, of this type, but for that to make sense, I wanted to take a tour into the some some technical details about how it how it works in Neo4j uh, 4.4. And this will be uh, kind of technical, so strap in, but I'll, I'll do my best to, to keep it understandable. So the te text index type was introduced in 4.4, and it's basically an evolution on the B-tree type. Basically, we're taking the text index part that was glued onto the B-tree and broken it, break, broken it out into a separate thing. And the purpose of it is to supplement the B tree for operations that uh, cannot be effectively done on the B tree, such as, or specifically contains and suffix queries. So we here see here like a wild card star and then something and a wild card or just with a leading wild card. Okay, so the following slides is about text index for uh, how they work in 4.4. Let's talk a little about the, like a minimum Lucene understanding to, to, to see what we uh, find here. 
So in the scene, the um, center, like the most important concept is the term. And the Lucene index answers which documents contain these terms. And a document in our case would be a node uh, or a relationship. So what nodes uh, contain this search phrase that I'm, that I'm looking for? And the terms are uh, the result of the tokenization process of the indexed text. So we, for example, if we have the hello world text, um, the, this, this uh, string will be tokenized in some way. And depending on, and to, to illustrate that this can be done in different ways, we'll look at the full text index as, a, as an example. So the default analyzer for, for the full text index will tokenize hello world into hello and world. The white space is removed and the exclamation mark is, is also removed. Um, but the text dash one dot O with the four four uh, one, it will just keep the entire string as it is. And note that like full text index and text dash one dot O, they are like they fulfill completely. They meet completely different needs. So it's not like a comparison for those two types. It's more to illustrate that the token tokenization process can can look differently. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about full text index later on, but for now we don't need to care about that. Okay, so we take strings, we tokenize them into terms, and the terms point to documents, which means nodes and relationships. Lucene stores those terms in a term dictionary, where each term uh, each unique term is stored once, and it points to all of the documents that contain that term. And we see here, for example, that uh, document eight here uh, belong, it belongs both to term one and to term three. So this document contains both of those terms, and it will be stored twice. And this, uh, this structure is flat. Um, so how can we then search in this index if the, if the structure is completely fast, flat? Doesn't that mean that we will just need to look at everything? And that's a great uh, question. Um, so there is another part of the scene here, which is called the finite state trans transducer, which basically is the structure in which the terms are indexed internally in Lucene. So how do you find the term you're looking for? And this is what it looks like. Uh, so if there is a way for you to take to go from uh, the green the green nest node to the left uh, to the black node to the right um, by and you find your word that you're looking for along the way here, that means that um, the term you were looking for is actually in the index and the aggregated um, value from the numbers here, if you take the upper route here, you get two plus five. So seven is the, the aggregated value. That's the place that you will find the term in. So for example, if we search for pint, we will take follow the P and then the I and then the T. And the aggregated value will be four, which means uh, the ID of the term is four. And then you'll, from there, you'll find what documents uh, that term belongs to. Okay, so we have the term dictionary and we have this finite state transducer thing that we can search in. But how can we support contains and suffix query in, queries in this structure. See, the finite state transducer always start with the beginning of the word. So how can we search for like uh, in internal strings here? That seems crazy. And it is, it, can, we, it doesn't actually support this kind of queries. Uh, we actually have to iterate through all of the terms in the index. 
So this is still in 4.4 four space now. OK, so uh, yeah, and re remember that um, in 4.4, four, the text index uses the complete um, property value as the term. So we kept the uh, hello world and we kept the string as it is, right? So this is going to be one of the terms. OK, so how, how does this perform then? Uh, so we have a synthetic uh, data set here with UUIDs. They are 36 characters long, and we have 10 million nodes. And we look for uh, six character sums, substrings. Um, using the, the range index, um, the new one in Neo 5 it takes uh, between 2.2 and 2.3 uh, milliseconds. The text index from 4.4 is, is a bit better, around the second. Um, the text 1.0 in, in 5.0, we have shaven away a little bit of the overhead, but it's still in the three-digit milliseconds. Um, and we'll, we're going to take it deeper now to to talk about uh, duplicates, how duplicate property values are stored. And we're going to see how that impacts performance. So in the, uh, in the B tree, in our native B tree implementation, the keys are, the duplicate keys are stored in its entirety. So the foo key here, key here is stored in its entirety and point to the documents. Lucene does it in a bit, more clever way. It just stores the key once and uh, keeps the documents um, uh, like together with one of th that only key, right? So already there is some indication that um, um, there, there should be some sort of performance difference given that both of the indexes will need to scan the entire, all of the values and filter out on the contains predicate. OK, so let's return to this same example with the, um, with the IDs. Now we have, uh, still have 10 million nodes, but we only have 10, 1 million uh, unique IDs, which means every uh, ID is assigned to t 10 different nodes. So in total, we will have 10, only 10% 10 uh, as, as, as many um, terms in the index. For the range index, uh, this doesn't make any difference. We still have a search time for two seconds. Um, but for the text one, uh, this actually cuts the, the performance uh, or like cuts the time uh, to, to only 10%, which is uh, great in a way, but it also points to a problem here. It means that the time it takes to search the index for, uh, for contains scales linearly with a number of unique values. So if you have more unique values, it will scale linearly. And that's not a very good thing. Uh, um, that's going to be problematic as you, as you scale up. OK, so now we've kind of outlined the, the problems that in, in, in near 4 j uh, for four for the for the text index type. So let's talk about how can we do sub find substrings more efficiently. And tada, here comes text dash 2.0. Very shiny and fancy name. So this one uses a trigram index uh, under the hood. It is the default uh, uh, implementation for the text type in EFJ5. And uh, you recognize it by the index provider text 2.0. And this iteration to re implement um, the, 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 back, the back end, so to, so to speak, of the, um, uh, the type is made possible by this decoupling of the index type. Right? So 
what is a, a trigram index? Well, a trigram is a group of three consecutive written uh, units, such as uh, letters, syllables, or words. So three letters, basically. And a trigram index is something that turns the text into all of its trigrams and index the trigrams. So if we have this text, trigrammed text, and we turn it into trigrams, we will have all of those kind of groups of, of letters. Uh, all of those will be terms in Lucene. All of them will point to the same document. And uh, if you want to then search for it, you take your search string. Here you have the wild card. So we're the wild cards on both sides. So this is a contains query. Uh, we want to find everything that contains gram. So you split the gram into the tri its trigrams, which is gra and ram, of course. And you find all of the documents that contain both of those trigrams. And the index itself will give some false positives here, right? So for example, this string will also contain gra and ram, but it doesn't contain the entire substring gram, right? So um, after we get index result, we filter it through the store to verify that verify with, with, with the actual strings, not only the trigrams. And then we return uh, the result to, to you as a user. OK, so this is a little bit about how, how it works, the trigram index. But let's see what it does for performance. So we have the same uh, data set still here with the UUIDs and uh, the, the previous results. And we see that the trigram index is in the single digits here. So in this case, it was more than 100x faster, which is fantastic, of course. But more importantly, it scales better. It doesn't scale linearly, um, which means that when you scale up, the, the time it takes to search the index will not, will not scale in the same, um, um, with the same speed, so to speak. Okay, but this so so this is a ben, like benchmark. It was run on embedded on our local laptop. There's no network, no driver, no cipher, but the numbers point to some ballpark expectations of of the performance, right? Um, but we all know that benchmarks lie. Right? So, but what 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 about the index? It seems crazy to just split the string up into all of its components and then index that. It should be like three times larger than the, the index. But that's not uh, necessarily the case. In this case, it's only 6% larger with the, the UUID example. Um, but we wanted to explore some, um, some other more real data sets as well. So um, we took uh, some, we imported some film titles and actors from the IMDb movie database and imported into Neo4j, created a text index, and we searched for substrings of movies and actors. And searching for 30, uh, among 31 million movies, the performance is kind of similar. We're down in the one digit. So like plus 100x faster. But the, the index, it's actually 68% larger. So uh, there is some trade-off here um, to, be, to be aware about. Um, and for the, the actor's part, the index is 23% larger. So there are some examples. And you'll need to, to try it out on your, your workload, on your store, to, to get some the exact values. But here are some ballpark numbers at least. OK, so to, to conclude, Neo4j has this new text index implementation. You identify it by the text 2.0 uh, string. Um, the performance has improved a lot for contains and ends with. Uh, it will be, it, it is the default that you will get when you create a text index. And um, 
you to upgrade your existing text indexes that you have in 4.4, you need to drop and create them again in Neo4j 5. There's no automatic migration there. OK, and I noticed that I don't have so much time left. So let me just um, kind of skim over what's new with text index. It's, it's not so complicated, so I think we'll be fine. Basically, it has support for string arrays. Uh, yeah, so let's read what the documentation says. If the indexed property contains a text array, each element of this array is analyzed independently, and all produced terms are associated with the same property name. So for example, uh, uh, the, the property paragraphs, if you have five, five strings in that array, all of those elements will be associated with the paragraphs key. And this is important when you use the uh, property key value in your search uh, query. Right? So this means that when querying such an index node or relationship, there is a match if any of the array elements match the query. So here we have some data. We have the paragraphs value here. Those are, this is an article about turtles, and this is an article about Renaissance artists. And they have, they, it also has the paragraph um, property. We have a full text index on those properties. And we can search for this paragraph the property, and we'll get some, some results. So. That's kind of the update to full text indexes. Full text index, it has support for string arrays. To upgrade your, your full text indexes, you don't need to do anything really, uh, unless the, if you have full text indexes and the properties that you have indexed also contain string array values, if that's the case, then uh, those are not yet indexed in 4.4. So in 5.0 uh, or in Neo4j 5, you will need to drop and recreate uh, those indexes in order to have a consistent um, uh, index. Otherwise, you don't need to do anything. OK, so uh, that's the end uh, of what I wanted to, to uh, present here. I'm super we're happy to take any questions, and I hope we have some time left for that. Hey, Anton, that was great. Thank you very much. We have uh, a few minutes left, so I think we can take a question or two. Um, one from Dave from earlier. Um, about the size uh, or larger index, can you do large indexes now instead of just twenty three thousand? Is is has that limit been uh, changed? Do you know? Mm. So the 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 limit for in for four the the limit is thirty two k if I remember correctly, and that's yep. is, that limit is the same. In uh, yes. new for day five. Okay. And then a question from Rick. I'm still confused about when to use which index type. Could Anton maybe share his views on this? Do you have a <laughs> okay a thirty Absolutely. second summary? So, which index? Which which uh, goes where? <laughs> you all you always want to use the range index unless you have contains or ends with queries. In that case, use text. Or you have a distance or bounding box queries. In that case, use point. So in or if you have very large strings, large, larger than 8k, use text. It's a simple answer. <laughs> OK, cool. Uh, got some love for for text 2.0 for the name. Teresa likes that name, so I think that's. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a beautiful name. It's a beautiful <laughs> name, yeah. And we have time one more from Dave. Um, does the new text index do regexp by default now? Hence the trigrams. 
No. Uh, and the reason for that is because the, the index need to do like the same thing as Cypher does. So the index should not change the result, right? That you would get from a Cypher query. It should only enhance the performance. So Cypher doesn't have support for, for red regex, um, which means there is no point for the underlying index to support that either. Uh, for those kind of more complicated queries, you would use a full text index. All right, cool. Well, uh, thank you very much, Anton. Uh, that was great. We'll see you later uh, on this track as well for some uh, meditation and mindfulness. So looking forward to, to that in a few hours. Uh, until then, um, have a good rest of your day and see you later.